modal verbs. They are also called uh, helping verbs. These include many, such as can, cannot in the negative, could, may, may, may not, might, must, should, mustn't, and of course there are others. The form of models is very simple. Just the model plus the verb in the base form or the infinitive, of course without two. Like in here, can cook, he can cook. Of course models are used more in communication, in everyday communication. Uh, can can express ability, for example. Like in this example, she can swim. That is, she has that ability to swim. But can can also express permission. I mean, asking for permission. Like in that example, can I read? Here the student is asking for permission to read. He's asking the teacher. Now note and remember that could is the past form of can. Well, in many situations. Like in this one, she could speak two languages when she was five. So here it's when she was five, she was already able to speak two languages. May and might. May can express permission. You want the permission to enter somewhere, an office, a house, you know. You knock on the door and you say, May I come in? May I come in? It means, do you, do you allow me to come in? May can also express probability. Just like might. Might also can express probability. Look at this. Look at the clouds. It may rain. It may rain. And here it's more probable. Look at the second situation. If I finish my homework early, I might go to the cinema. I might go to the cinema. Here it's less probable. Probably I will not go. But there is, there is you know, a very little probability. So may is stronger than might when expressing probability. But both express probability. I remember may also can, you know, in questions can express permission as in that example. May I come in? May I come in? Should. Should uh, is widely used or is frequently used. First, it is used to express moral obligation. Like in this example, you should help your friends. It's very ethical, it's very moral, right? It's very good. It is also used to express necessity. You should study every day. It's for your benefit. You should study every day and it's necessary. You're a student. That's what you should do. More often, should is used to express advice or to give advice. You look terrible. You should go to the doctor. Means I advise you to go to the doctor. Must. Must is used in three different situations. First of which is obligation. As in this situation, you must be 18 to drive because they cannot give you a driving license if you are not 18. So you must be 18 to drive. Necessity. I must make my bed in the morning. It's a house rule. Now here in this family, their mothers or the mother, you know, um, set a rule or sets a rule that all her children must make their beds before they go to school. Must also express his logical deduction. Uh, we deduce, we are sure about something. Uh, we, we make a deduction and it is a positive deduction. Like in here, it's snowing outside. I just look from the window and I say, it must be cold. In other words, I am certain it is cold because of the snow. Time to practice. Look at exercise number one. Take your time. Look at the situations. 
and fill in the blanks with the right model. Exercise 2 Here, just distinguish between should and must. Fill in the blanks, complete the exercise, take your time. Answers to exercise number one. One, my mother can cook very well. It means she has the ability to cook very well. Number two, Tom could run very fast when he was young. He had that ability to run very fast as a young person. Now we understand he's no longer young. Number three, Take your umbrella, it may rain. Here, it is more probable that it will rain. Might can also, you know, uh, be used there. But if you, are, you think it's less probable, that the rain is less probable. Number four. Can I use the dictionary to do the exercise? May I use the dictionary to do the exercise? Here, you are asking for permission to use the dictionary to do the exercise. Either the teacher gives you the permission and you say, yes, you can. Or the teacher may forbid you and say, no, you, you can't or you mustn't. Number five. My house is very small, so I may move to another one. Now here, may is more probable. What makes it more probable is the fact that the house is very small. However, some people might simply say, I might move to another one. Number six. Can you speak Russian fluently? Here you ask about the ability to, uh, well, it, whether the person has got that ability to speak Russian fluently. Number seven. Teacher, can I close the window? Here it's making a request. Or you are asking for permission to close the window, probably because there is wind or because you feel cold or something inside the classroom. You see, there are contexts in which we use these models. They are more used in communication, everyday communication. Number eight and last, mom, can you help me with my homework? I hear the relationship between a child and his mom is very intimate, it's very close, so can is, is you know, more probable. However, sometimes we want to respect parents and you want, you want to be more polite. You say, could you help me with my homework? It's more polite. Could you help me with my homework? Answers to exercise two. Now here, we will understand deeply the difference between must and should. Number one, when you travel by car, you must use your seat belt. If you don't, you'll get fined by the police. So it's an obligation. There is no question about that, okay? It's unquestionable. You must use your seat belt. Number two. If you have a headache, you should take an aspirin. Here, we use should because there are other options, like take a hot shower, like... Um, drink some orange juice, like just have a rest, sleep or something. So therefore, must, you know, is probably stronger. So we use should. Number three, the light is on, is on in the house. They must be at home. Here it's not an obligation, it's a deduction. Of course, when we see light in, in the house, it means that there are some people inside. Okay, we deduce, we make a deduction, right? A logical one, a positive deduction, we understand. Nobody goes out with the light on and leaves the light on in the house. Number four, you should help your mother with the housework. Here, it's, it's a moral obligation, it's good. But it's not, you know, um, strong obligation, so we use must. No, we use should because it's just moral. Your job is to do your homework and your mom does the housework, you know, to get life easier for you and to help you with your studies. So just do your homework and leave your mom do your, her housework. Number five. Somebody asks, do you want to go to the cinema? 
And the other person, the friend, answers, OK, but I must finish my homework first. Now here, homework is, you know, is an obligation. Because if you don't do it, you might be in hot water, you might be in trouble with your teacher. So therefore, you must finish the homework. Well, homework has got a priority over the cinema in all cases. Number six, you should put on your coat, it's cold outside. Here it's not once again strong, it's, you know, just should and not must, because there are other possibilities. Maybe just want to take, uh, to, to put on a pullover, uh, maybe you just want, you know, to put on a jacket, not necessarily a coat, right? So, it's not really, you have, you have got the choice, and when there is a choice, we use should, not must, because it's not that strong. Seven, students must obey school rules. But well, that's it, it's very strong, because if you go against the rules at school, you might be punished, or you might, you might be, you know, expelled from school, and that's a calamity. Number eight and last, he has very good marks in school, he must study a lot. We make a deduction, that person who uh, always gets good marks at school, we understand, we are sure, that he studies a lot, so he must study a lot. We make a deduction, we are sure about. That's all for today. I hope you understood some of the models. More is coming about models, especially perfect models. Thank you so much for listening to me. Keep your fingers crossed and enjoy the lessons. Bye-bye.